In this episode of Retro Now, I'm going to be taking a look at the Zipstick Joystick. This episode of Retro Now is another follow-up to my recent unboxing video, where I share with you the contents of a box of goodies that I'd got for my Commodore 64. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a more detailed look at the Zipstick Joystick. I'm going to be taking it apart, taking a look inside, cleaning it up if necessary, then I'm going to put it back together again, plug it into my Commodore 64, and try it out with some games. The Zipstick joystick was manufactured in the mid to late 80s and it was a popular choice here in the UK where it sold in reasonably good numbers. Even today, a quick search on eBay will throw up a number of good clean examples uh, as I have here. Uh, it was uh, sold in a number of varieties. You could get this one here with the yellow buttons. I also did one with uh, pink buttons uh, and they did uh, also did one with the uh, auto fire functionality on it. This particular example doesn't, but uh, on the ones that do, you'll find on just on the corner here, there's a little button that you can uh, switch to give you the auto fire functionality. Uh, it uses micro switches all around, so for the, uh, the fire buttons and for the joystick itself. And it's very similar in design to the Competition Pro uh, type of joystick that I have here. This particular example is from the PC. It has the uh, 15 pin connector that you would have found on PCs of the 1990s era, uh, often on the back of sound cards. Uh, again, like the uh, Zipstick, it uses micro switches all around. And this particular example does have the auto fire functionality. So again, like the Zipstick on the corner, there's a little switch that you can click to give you the auto fire functionality. Uh, though, if I'm being honest, I don't really remember the Zipstick from back in the 80s. Uh, my uh, joystick of choice then was this one. This is maybe familiar to you. This is uh, an Atari style of joystick. And this particular example comes from my Atari 2600. Uh, later on, I upgraded to this joystick, which is more sort of flight stick style of joystick. Uh, with a very squeaky fire button. Uh, much like the Atari 2600 example, this one uses bubble contacts uh, on the circuit board. And that doesn't give you a very positive feedback. I don't particularly like it, I know some people do. I much prefer the, uh, the micro switch style joystick such as the, uh, the Zipstick one here, and that's the, why, uh, the reason why I went for this one. Um, when I first built my Commodore 64, I did start using this on, on some of the games and quickly found that it was really not that playable. Um, not entirely sure how I managed to, to play games back in the 1980s with it, but I did. Um, uh, so I uh, went on to eBay and I, I found this example. As I say, it's a nice clean example. Doesn't look like it's seen uh, much of any use. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. Anyway, uh, even though it is a clean example, for your entertainment today, I am going to take it apart and take a look inside. We'll take a look at how it works and give it a bit of clean up. Uh, and then I'm going to put it back together again. And I'll plug it into the Commodore 64 and try it out on a couple of games. Okay, so before I take this part, I'm going to have a look around the uh, the overall construction of this joystick. It does look to be a good quality product. Uh, in addition to the micro switches, it looks as though it's constructed out of a very uh, nice quality plastic. So it looks as though it could take a bit of punishment. Uh, anyway, let's look on the back here. So we've got five screws here we need to undo. Let's start with this first one. And then we take out the last one here under this uh, the, the, the rubber sucker foot that we've got there. Let's put those to one side, out of the way. Okay, now I'm going to try and prise these two halves apart. I'm going to do it quite gently because I suspect there are wires that connect. Yeah, so there's got some micro switches in the base there for the fire buttons. And they're connected on a very thin wire, so I just want to be careful there. Uh, looking at the base there, it looks as though these micro switches are just sort of held in there. So I'm going to try and take those out in a second. Uh, let's take a look at what's in the top here. So if you look in there, we've got like a ring of micro switches around the uh, the, the central shaft of the joystick. Uh, just turn that to the light so you can see that a little bit better there. Uh, we've got like wires running around that. So uh, there you go. The shaft sort of hits these micro switches there all the way around. Uh, got a cable there, so I just need to prise out the, uh, the cable support from uh, the retaining uh, lug on the top there. I'm just trying to look how we can get these micro switches out. They look as though they're just on, on like a circle of plastic or something. So hopefully I can just lift those out in one piece. Uh, yeah, so they yeah they're all joined together on on one sort of base unit there. So let's try and take those out. Uh, just get a screwdriver and just just carefully prise that out. That seems to be coming free. And lift the whole thing out. Hopefully it'll come out in one piece. Yeah, so just put that down there for one minute. Uh, and 
it looks quite clean the top of the lid but we'll, we'll come back to that in a second and then let's see if we can get these micro switches out uh, from the bottom here again hopefully they'll just lift out I just need to remember how they, they go in as well because at some point I'm gonna have to put these back in uh, and put this all back together again so just let's take the whole so I can take the whole wiring harness and on all the micro switches away in one piece let's just move those to one side uh, again look at the base here it looks nice and clean uh, but I'm going to just give it a, a clean up, so I'm going to use some ipropanol uh, uh, alcohol here. Good old IPA. And give it a liberal squirting in there. And I'm just going to get in there with a, a, a bit of kitchen cloth and wipe that round. Uh, it probably doesn't really need it. I mean, I did, did the inside is as clean as the outside, but uh, for purposes of demonstrating what I'm doing here, I'm just going to give it all a good clean. Uh, okay. Right, just going to get a brush and just get that in there and, and give that a good uh, brush out round. Again, I don't really need to do this, but uh, it doesn't hurt. While I've got it apart, this is a, probably the one opportunity I'm going to have to. Uh, clean it. Look at how thin those wires are. I wouldn't like to do this too often. So just again, give that a good going round with this cloth, and then uh, just give a, a little wipe over on the outside as well, just to make sure it's all nice and clean. And getting round behind those the, the, the uh, rubber suckers there, just to make sure everything's all nice and clean. Yeah, I think that'll do. Uh, pop that to one side. And again, taking a look in the top here. Uh, that's I can't really get those out very easily. Uh, but the central shaft is held in by a circlip there. So if I just try and ease that off with this screwdriver, hopefully that'll uh, let me take the whole unit apart and get that shaft out and we can give a clean up around that as well. I try not to stab my fingers with the, the screwdriver. Okay, yep, that seems to be coming free now, so I'll just pop that out. Nearly, I think one more go with the screwdriver, and we're off. Yep, good. Now again, put that to, uh, put to one side where I won't lose it. Uh, now, this should pull out somehow. Uh, I think I need to take this bottom bit off. It just needs to. Uh, screw, nope, I think I might have to just pull that off, so let's just see if it'll come off, yep, there we go, it's out of the way, and now I can see the spring, take the spring off, uh, that sort of, just give the, the stick its tension, and the whole thing just comes out, and take that collar out, and just take the top yellow collar out as well, and there we are, now three to give this all a good clean. So let's again, put some spray, a liberal coating of IPA in there, uh, being careful not to get it all over my hands. And a good brush out in there. Get to all the corners. Make sure it's all nice and clean. And then I'll give that a wipe round as well. So let's just finish off just with the brush there. Round. Uh, and the good thing about using IPA is it, it unlike water is it does just evaporate pretty quickly so uh, you don't need to be too too worried about drying it all off and again around the outside here is a little bit dirty around the top there uh, so that's the first signs of real dirt that I've seen on it under under where the uh, the joist the, the, the actual uh, shaft of the joystick came out and those buttons there give those a clean as well a little bit of grub around those there we go, that's nicely done, nice and clean, and just those buttons there, got a little bit of grub on them there, just try and get those out. That's looking good, lovely, nice and clean again, put that to one side, and I can uh, now turn my attention to the actual shaft of the joystick. Now this is a nice solid metal shaft, it's you know heavy duty, so I could take some punishment. 
and just give all the other individual bits a clean. So this is the uh, the uh, collar from the underside. And give that a, clean, a little bit of dirt on there. Let me clean that off. Again, good, good. Go get in there with the brush. All the way around. Yeah, that's nice and clean. Dry that off. And just uh, get that cloth in the inside there, give it a little going round. Yep, that's done. Uh, the yellow colours again a little bit dirty, so let's give that a good clean, try and get those marks off of it. Yep, that's looking good. Uh, just a little, little tiny bit there I just need to get off, uh, and then we'll be done. And then this is the bottom retaining clip. I'm not quite sure what you call it. I guess the bit that goes at the bottom of the joystick and it just holds it in place around the spring. And then there's the spring itself. Now with this spring, I'm just gonna. It's not. It's not too. There's no real signs of rust on it. But what I'm gonna do is gonna get some grease and just lightly grease it so that that'll uh, prevent it going rusty in the future. Uh, it's a bit like the springs you get on the keyboards or on uh, Commodore 64s. They always. Uh, pick up a little bit of corrosion, it's always good to, uh, just to wipe some grease around this uh, again that'll just preserve it yeah, there we go and that's probably good to go for another 30 years uh, what I'll also do is just grease up that metal part of the, uh, the shaft of the joystick as well just a very 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 thin coating of grease around that just to uh, stop any corrosion. Okay, and then we're done. That's the cleaning finished. Uh, almost. Let's get a bit of IPA in the cloth. And just wipe around the top of the, uh, the joystick shelf there. Just almost forgot that. There we go, that's nice, nice and clean. And there we go, that's, that's finished the cleaning of the joystick. Okay, so now we're going to start putting it back together. So the, putting the shaft in is pretty much the reverse. We get that top collar on first, then push the joystick shaft through. On the underside, I'd need to put the, uh, the bottom collar. And that just goes there. And then the spring goes in next. And followed by the retaining, uh, I guess that's like a retaining lug. Uh, it just clips on the underside of the spring, pushes against that, and get, gives a sort of tension to the joystick. Uh, and, and if you want to lighten up the tension on that, you can just. Uh, I've, I've seen a video where they just rubbed down the top of that, just just made it slightly shorter. Okay, now I need my circlip and put that back on. Uh, let's go find that. There we go. And. So we just put the circlip around the bottom of the uh, the shaft of the joystick and that will just hold everything in place. There we go, let's uh, pop it on, there we go, and it's on, there we go, all done. Okay so now we need to get that wiring harness back in uh, and this is going to be a bit of a fiddly old job. Uh, need to. Not sure whether to go with the micro switches on the bottom half first, or we'll get that uh, the ring of micro switches on the top. Let's, uh, let's get the wiring harness over first of all, and have a look at that. I think what we'll do is put the top one in first, and then I can uh, I can get the cable uh, support in. So just put that around the shaft to make sure they're all touching. The micro switches are all touching on that shaft. Uh, push it down, make sure there's no cables caught as well, that's really important, you need to just make sure all your cables are uh, not being trapped in any way, because they're very very thin cables, I don't want to get, they're easily broken, so just push that down, and yeah, look around, make sure everything's clipped in as it should be, it all looks good, uh, and then I'm just going to, uh, these need to go into the bottom, but first I just push that 
cable support into the retaining clip at the top. Now I need to work out how to get these back onto the base without uh, breaking any of the wires. Right, so just put that the left hand um, button switch in first, and again make sure the cables are all rooted round, and then the right hand one, and just check everything's all in place and check that none of those cables are going to get squashed when we put the the case back together again. Uh, doesn't hurt to this point just take some time just to make sure all your cables are rooted round as they sh look as though they should be and it doesn't look as though anything's going to get pinched in there and then we can put the two halves back together again just one last check in there that looks all good okay let's put those two halves back and just squeeze them home test the buttons are working so uh, just squash the case together, make sure my fire buttons are working. Good clicking sound there, good clicking sound there. Let's just test the joystick, all four switches are clicking nicely, so that looks good. All we need to do now is to put the screws back in and tighten it up. Uh, that's the last screw done up there. Just do that up, not too tight, you don't want to over tighten it and break it. Again, check all the uh, the buttons are working, uh, the joystick buttons, the four micro switches are all working and clicking nicely. And uh, there we go, all nicely cleaned and ready to go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I've plugged it into my Commodore 64, I've got a little test program here, uh, and I can just test everything's working, so uh, up, down, left and right, and the fire button. They're all responding as they should, so that's tested nicely. Happy with that. So let's try it out on a few games. Okay, so first game I'm going to go for, I think, is going to be... Let's see what we've got on here. Oh, I think we'll go for 1942. I like that game. That's one of my favourite games. Uh, it's got a great tune on this as well, so... So we go at that, see if I'm any better using this joystick than I was on my uh, video uh, for making this Commodore 64. It was pretty awful on that, I was playing that with one of my old uh, joysticks, the one with the squeaky fire button, that was rubbish at that. Uh, so far, oh no, actually, <laughs> okay, well a little bit better than I was on that, but maybe it's down to me, not the joystick. Try it on uh, Decathlon. This is a good, uh, good test that the micro switches are working. With a good old uh, waggle back uh, left and right there. Uh, again, not doing very well, but uh, I don't think I can blame the joystick for that. Uh, we're going to try it on Donkey Kong. Let's is a pretty decent conversion of the arcade game uh, which again doesn't really help me be any good at it but there we go uh, this time I'm going to try out Grid Runner this is one of my favourite games from the days uh, when I had a Vic 20 many hours playing this very happily playing this on the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 version is uh, even better with a great sound on it. And I think we'll just finish up here with a, a quick go on Amiga race. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Everything seems to be working uh, really well with the joystick, so uh, job done.
Well, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, then make sure you let me know by liking it with a big thumbs up. Why not get involved in the conversation by leaving me a comment and letting me know what you think. If you're new to the channel or you haven't done so already, then please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell icon to set your notifications so that you'll be notified when I upload new content to the channel. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and wherever you are, stay safe, keep well, and I look forward to seeing you with another episode of Retro Now.